Promise you all, are you all ready for the question? <laughs> are you all ready for the question? Chalo, hai, okay. So here comes the question. All you need to do is tweet the correct answer to the Zerka Digital handle at the rate Zerka Digital. Also to the Microsoft Advertising handle at the rate MSFT Advertising. And please use the hashtag TechMunch. Okay, so here goes. Now tell me, what is the worldwide and India PC market share for Microsoft Advertising? And your options are 15.6% and 10.1%. 10.6% and 4.1% or 9.6% and 8.1%. Phir se bolo? Ah, phir se bolna padega. So you can say option 1, 2 or 3. Even that will, that will do, okay? Option 1 is 15.6 and 10.1%. 10.6 and 4.1% or 9.6 and 8.1%. And you could actually win yourself an iPhone... Yeah, 10R. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's head into our next session. Keynote address 2. And this one's called Change Before You Have To. Wow. And this session is being steered by a man who comes armed with 20 years of experience of having worked in uh, banking, financial services, and advertising. He's held several leadership positions at organizations such as Standard Chartered, ANZ Grindleys, and Deutsche Bank, and Relegame Acquire Wealth Management. Now, he's been writing for several key publications across the world. He's been featured in several key publications across the world, such as the Wall Street Journal. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Vikas Agnihotri, Country Director of India Sales, Google. Here he comes. Good morning. That's your clicker. Good morning. You know, companies have been slow to adopting into digital uh, as well as new technologies into their core competencies. To an extent where, you know, I believe that their core competency has become a competence, a competency trap. And there are several examples that you can actually look back uh, over the years to see how certain companies just refuse to evolve or move along in the times. In fact, to an extent today, what used to be science fiction has become reality. Things that were unimaginable are powering the growth today and enabling a whole change in the way we do our, the way we live our lives. And which is why, you know, I chose the, the title the way it, it is. And uh, many of you, I don't know how many of you are over here, I'm sure many of you would be um, how many of you follow science fiction? How many of you remember Star Trek? Yeah? This image, Captain Kirk, would be very, very familiar to many of you. Captain Kirk, and you see over there, is actually have, holding in his hand what is called the communicator. This is 1966. 2004, you have the Motorola flip phone. In all probability, that is the one that got inspired by Captain Kirk in Star Trek. Here's another one, 1962, this is a serial called Jetsons. Jetsons was the first one who came in in 1962. Somebody had the power of imagining that you could actually have, it had its own hardware to have a video conference where you could talk to your friends, your family, and including your boss, right? 2003 is what you saw as a handheld on a mobile as a video conference ability. Look at this one, same serial, same serial. It actually ran for one season, unfortunately, Jetsons. It was far ahead of its own time, right? Again, this is a flying car. Jetsons had a flying car. You now see in 2009, we actually saw the first time a, you know, a driverless car. If you really look at it in terms of the drones and the work that, that is happening on drones, in all probability, in our own lifetime, not too far ahead, we will definitely see maybe flying cars too. You think so? Could happen. So are you prepared for what's next? It's a question. This is really directed to most of the marketeers around, and this is what I ask most of the marketeers, because it's really a question for them, because consumers are adopting to technology 
faster than the marketers have been. Look about, think about some of this stuff, you know, these numbers behind in terms of what's happening in India. It's probably, I think, one of the finest moments for all professionals to be working in this country. You have a GDP that is growing. Uh, this is a McKinsey report. It's expected to grow from, you know, on an average about 7.5% 7 7 up to 2030. You will be, we were 2018 number six in terms of our global ranking. This year, we will be number five. Not that we are growing too much, but I think UK is shrinking because of Brexit issues. But we will be, nevertheless, number five. And we will continue to grow in 2030 close to a $7 trillion economy. And we will be after China, US, and, uh, and India, right? Amazing growth. This is something that most of you would know all about. You know, it's what's called the geo effect. Two years ago, if you look at it, post, you know, the data prices fell dramatically, unprecedented. It's never happened anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, that you had data prices falling by 90% overnight. With the result, data consumption went up by 18x. Today, we are in a situation where those numbers over there are mind-boggling. I joined Google about eight years ago at a point of time that we did not have even 100 million people on the internet. It had taken 18 years to get the first 100 million people onto the internet in this country. And look at the numbers, 560 million people on the internet, 350 million people are on smartphones. Number is going to go up to 750 million by 2023, and in all probability more than a billion users in this country on the internet by 2030. Phenomenal growth rates, right? Now think about, as I said, a GDP growth that's actually happening. You have data, data consumption, people and consumers lapping onto the technology, and you have a very, very young generation or very young population of people in this country. Pretty much from 1981 to now, 50% of the population in this country has been born post 1981 to now, right? Which basically is, brings us to three important factors, which is an amazing confluence of things that are happening, which again should actually be very exciting for most of the marketers in this country. Number one, you have, in fact, let's, you know, there is a millennial dominance, as we call it. Let's start from bottom up, where by 2025, you will have almost 45% of the workforce in this country as millennials. They will be connected, no doubt about that, on the internet. So reaching them is that much easier. And there is a report that's been done by Kalari Capital, which actually says that Especially in the, in the stage where India is, it's called what's, what's called the S-curve, actually. The stage where India is, with the GDP growing 2x, the FMCG per capita consumption is going to grow up 4x. Okay, think about it, right? If you are in an FMCG, uh, in the FMCG world, in the next five to seven to eight years, the FMCG consumption per capita is going to grow up 4x, right? Phenomenal time to be in that industry. So is this, you know, is India coming online or is it, is the change really uh, already happened? Digital is now, it's, it's, it's actually become mainstream, right? And what we are seeing is that as, in fact, as over the years, and it's not too far back, even if you look at just about three to four years back, the way technology or science and technology has made it intuitively simple for people to come onto the internet, thanks to the mobile devices that we have in our hand. In fact, two years ago, my own daughter made a comment uh, which has stayed with me, saying that you know even the uh, grandmother can come onto the in come come online onto the internet today, and it's become as simple as that. And that truly is, uh, you know, it truly is a fact. Gone are those days where you had to sit behind, um, you know, um, I don't know how many of you remember, sit behind a computer, uh, get onto a you know a router. That noise used to come in. We used to feel super excited that you know at least we heard that noise, and then you will get the connection. And Eureka, like, you know, you're going to be on the internet, but you needed a whole bunch of things to do, and then something magical will happen, right? That magic is taken for granted as in your hands today, right? That is, again, the power of digital, and, and, and everybody's seeing that in, in India, whether it is metros or rural or whatever it is. In fact, we are fast moving till about a few years ago, or two, three years ago, we used to talk about the 3M phenomena, right? Male, millennial, metro, a uh, male, millennial, and metro in terms of, you know, how the internet population um, uh, was more, you know, was more concentrated around, right? That phenomena is again moving much, much beyond the male, millennial, and metro phenomena, right? There was also this whole concept you would have heard where people used to talk about digital native 
versus you know adopters into digital right again if you think about the example i gave about my daughter talking about the grandmother there is no longer this whole concept of a digital native versus a digital adopter because again technology has become so simple that everybody is actually enjoying the benefits of what internet brings to them in their lives so i'm going to talk about basically four trends uh, as we see it at, at google uh, you know in terms of bharat is going online right it's more rural coming online regional languages are going to play a very important role video is going to play a very important role and the role of ai and ml and how that is actually changing the way we are uh, we are we are actually yeah, you know uh, or changing our lives as we see it in terms of you know um, I mean, this is a really important, um, uh, I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity of visiting rural areas. Uh, you know, I, I, I visit, uh, I make it a point that I visit at least one or two villages every year because of the program that we run, and I'm going to talk about that much later. And I can actually see some of the changes that are happening and how the technology and digital is, uh, is adding, you know, as is adding to people's lives, uh, you know, in rural areas, and they're finding a use and as soon as you find a use which is beyond entertainment so they come for entertainment news uh, for information needs to finding out information about their passion points their hobbies etc and as they're finding more and more how to videos and many others it's a irreversible process as we see it with the result today on google search which we see is that uh, uh, there are more search queries that are coming outside of the eight metros than from the eight metros in itself that shift has already happened from 2012 to now, the increase in terms of number of search queries or coming from rural areas has multiplied by four times, right? There's a 45% uh, uh, of the internet users will be women online. Remember the 3M story and as I said, how it's dramatically shifting, right? There are more women coming online, which is a, which is a, which is a really good sign. These are three stories I'm going to talk to you about, which, which I'm personally very impressed with, which have touched my heart for sure, and I, and I hope uh, you know, you will enjoy listening to them as much uh, as I've, you know, uh, when I read about them as much as it touched my heart. The first one really is, um, uh, this is a story of a gentleman called Srinath. Uh, like you and me, he had a dream. His dream was to come and work in a big city and make a change in his life. But he came in and all he could do was to become a porter at the railway station in Cochin in the state of Kerala. There was so much of hard work that he had to do, and there was so much of you know, unpredictability in terms of you know, uh, his ability to move out of the railway station to study that he soon forgot that he needs to, you know, he, he actually gave up on his, um, on his passion on, on studying and trying to make a change uh, in his life. Suddenly his dream he could actually see was getting shattered. Google, along with Railtel, Railtel uh, you know, has brought Wi-Fi to more than 400 railway stations. It is fast, it's stable, um, and it's great. In fact, it has, uh, you know, the speed is much more than many of your offices in all probability, right? Uh, he, as Srinath, took advantage of that and started learning through YouTube videos and gave the Kerala Public Services exam, got 82%, and today is the assistant village um, uh, inspector so, uh, uh, as part of the state government, right? Quite phenomenal. This is another story of Choti. She, is, uh, she comes from a village in Rajasthan. Uh, it's a village uh, uh, called um, uh, Nangal Govind, right? Uh, she is an internet sati. Uh, she she's a mother of four. She has uh, uh, her husband to augment their earnings from agriculture, actually a supplement the earnings from uh, agriculture, was also a driver uh, and, and actually trying to earn a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, driving around the cabs, etc. in that area. Through the internet, she actually started doing research and she found for him a second-hand car, which now they own. She got an online loan done through, through and together, they bought a car, which is a Toyota, and they now run that. He runs that as his own car, as his own taxi, and they have 2 x their uh, income levels uh, as compared to what they were doing earlier. In terms of Internet Sathi, we have, uh, this is a program that we run with uh, Tata Trust. We have more than 58,000 Internet Sathis that are covering more than 200, 
2,8,000 villages across 18 states. They have today touched the lives of over 20 million women in rural areas. In fact, before we started this program, the, uh, 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 the ratio of women coming from rural areas used to be 1 is to 10. It's now 4 is to 10, right? which is a phenomenal achievement. Uh, uh, and a program of this massive scale is, is really difficult and complex to run. The third one uh, is this is an app called Bolo. Um, this is, this is uh, another um, you know, uh, re uh, research uh, that was done actually said that students coming from rural areas in class 5 had a reading ability equivalent of students in class 2. Right? It's some things that we take for granted in the city, but the fact of the matter is, and you would appreciate, that reading ability actually determines your education ability as you move along into the future years. Uh, and therefore, if at class 5 your reading ability is down to a level of class 2, there is no way that you are going to finish your education. It is going to, it's going to be a pretty broken experience. So what the app really does is actually it's English and Hindi. It uses the Google um, a speech to text um, um, yeah, technology and it helps actually get parents to download this for their, for their children. It helps the person as you speak along to see you know, how, uh, what's your pronunciation, how's your reading ability and there is actually like a Google Assistant inbuilt something called someone called Dia who actually encourages you as you go along. In fact, she, if you're doing something right and you've done something right in a sentence, she actually says Shabash or says, you know, why don't you try again, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, it's a pretty immersive experience, and we do hope that, you know, this will bring in some change into the lives of, uh, of the young students in rural areas. Again, going on to the second part, which is, uh, you know, languages. Uh, you know, it's, my, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a colleague of mine, uh, once he mentioned this to me, and it stayed with me, that if you're traveling anywhere in the world, the sound of two things really make you feel, you know, a little more comfortable. It's one of the most two important uh, sounds or noises that you will actually hear and you feel a lot reassured. First is the sound of your name and second is the sound of your language, right? Is that true? Do you think so? Right, especially in a country which has multiple, multiple languages, right? So what we've seen is that as we progressed with the internet going into, uh, you know, as Bharat was coming in, no more than 200 odd million people in this country can speak in English. We have already reached 550, 560 million people onto the internet. Obviously, they are coming in because they have to have content which is beyond English, right? And they're finding a lot of content on through video. And what we believe really is that voice as well as video, it actually is the greatest, uh, it unlocks the education barrier for people to come onto the internet. You don't need to be literate. You don't need to be... Uh, educated if you have content and especially you have videos uh, explaining to you and, and, and helping you learn or, or pursue your hobbies it's, or passion points, right? We are also seeing that from now onwards, literally nine, on, 9 out of the 10 people who are coming onto the internet are non-English speaking. It actually also gets reflected when we see the percentage in terms of YouTube content consumption, 95% of that is non-English, right? Again, this is something that, you know, we understand really, uh, uh, you know, as Google, we understand that one of the things that is really important is that when people come onto the internet, they need to find content uh, on, uh, on the internet, um, which, is, which is available in languages for people to consume, right? Again, uh, think about it a few years ago, it was again predominantly the internet was predominantly an uh, English content-based um, um, destination. So we've been working under a project called Navleka. Uh, this is with, with the publisher community. Here, um, it, you know, it's been made pretty simple that you could, act, you could have a PDF document uh, in English uh, as an example. This would get scanned. It gets scanned and it gets automatically uh, through, through uh, it gets scanned. It automatically gets into a um, editable format where the person can edit, uh, you know, um, the words, the, uh, the, the sentences, etc. as well as it gets you a format uh, which is web friendly and mobile web friendly, right? And it happens within minutes. Uh, it's really easy to do that. It uses uh, Google's uh, uh, neural, machine, uh, neural machine translation that is available in this country in 11 languages. Again, 
what we've seen with this is that many of the publishers who did not have the resources or technology now have the resources and technology to produce content and get that content in languages uh, and make it available for many of the users. And along with AdSense, we are able to help them monetize that content and, and get some revenues uh, for, for the publishers. Again, as we said, uh, you know, video is uh, it just unprecedented in the manner in which uh, video is being consumed. 75% of the data consumption is on, is on video. And I think it would be no surprise to anyone if you're sitting over here again, right? Um, YouTube uh, is, I mean, this is like a couple of months old data. So it's much ahead of 265 million a number of users that we have in terms of monthly active. The, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, what is amazing and what we are really happy and delighted about is that we actually have a 90% attach rate in terms of daily active users, right? So, um, so when people come on, into, uh, on YouTube, what are they doing? As I, as I mentioned earlier, they're looking at entertainment, they're looking at news, they're looking at information around uh, their passion points, hobbies, learning, science, et cetera, et cetera, and which is actually reflective in terms of what we are seeing in one year, 2018 itself, we saw a 3x jump in watch time for science, cooking, and hobby-related videos, um, and, and, and many more um, interest points that people have, right? Here's another example that, you know, um, I quite liked, and I thought we should share this with you. Uh, this is a destination called Learn, uh, Learn uh, Engineering. Uh, this is uh, uh, run by a general called Sabin Matthews. Um, you know, you would remember, uh, at least I remember my own days when I was in college uh, and I was studying, there were, there were points of time when a professor would be teaching you, and either, which is most of the time, you will get distracted, right, because you were not paying attention or something else would happen, or just you didn't understand what the hell was the person talking about, right? But you couldn't tell the professor, please stop, rewind, and start all over again. So you spend the rest of the session, because you were there, completely oblivious of what is happening around. So once you were in a state of your own, then you continued in the state of your own because you had just lost the, lost the connect, right? With something like this, um, Sabin used to be called in his own, uh, you know, in his own uh, college, et cetera, as Mr. Concept. He used to get down into the basics and, you know, has the ability to explain to people in a really, you know, in a fundamental uh, simplification process. He built this whole, um, uh, uh, you know, video destination for learning engineering and, and simplifying engineering, where you can actually watch the video, stop it, rewind it, you know, watch it again, and watch it in the language that you want. In fact, my own son who's doing engineering actually uses this a lot uh, himself. This channel is available in English, Hindi, and believe it or not, in Japanese, Korean, Bhasa, and Spanish, right? And that, again, tells you that a business idea coming out of India, because learning is learning and it, can, and it has global implications, in the languages in that they are, they are reaching out to global audiences sitting out uh, and operating here. Again, this is something uh, uh, very close to my heart in terms of you know, how Google is actually making an impact uh, in the lives of various people beyond you know, what you normally hear in terms of advertising, etc. So let me just give you a bit of a glimpse, right? We talk a lot about AI and machine learning, et cetera. Um, again, we are seeing massive, massive adoption uh, uh, as we go along. There is a 7x. So I mean, you should look upon AI and machine learning really as an enabler to bring in efficiencies rather than a disruptor for you know, what your people normally look upon it. We are looking at it as a 7x increase in the use of the Google Assistant, and I hope many of you in this room are using Android and Google Assistant, and you will actually see the benefits of some of that. Many of the companies themselves have started actually using that. In fact, if you were to go on Google today on Android and say, you know, okay, Google, uh, talk to Cadbury's. In fact, Cadbury's will start sending you cricket messages as you go along. You should try that. Or you talk to Nestle and say, okay, Google, talk to Nestle. Nestle will start giving you information if you were a, you know, if you were a young mother. It starts giving you information about nutrition value of products, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole bunch of amazing things that today are possible and, and, and accessible by, by organizations. Um, there are three examples, again, as I said, I want to share with you, which is related to weather, agriculture, and health, right? Uh, we are working uh, with the um, central water resources or with the Ministry of uh, water resources 
Here is a project that we are actually working in terms of identifying or getting early signs of uh, river flooding, right? This is, this is a project that we've taken to work um, in the Ganges Brahmaputra region, which is prone, as you would all know, to, to floods, right? And using the machine learning and, and a whole bunch of image recognition processes, et cetera, we are able to actually uh, provide early uh, warning signals uh, of a imminent um, you know, river flooding to happen. Uh, we started this project last year. We were able to give the first uh, signal um, in about September 2018 for the floods that actually hit the Patna region. And you can imagine that a timely warning like that uh, can save lives of hundreds and thousands of people. In fact, after the first alert went out, there were 54,000 people who came onto the site to check out exactly what, what is the nature of um, yeah, you know, the impact that could have been uh, or was going to be caused because of the river flooding. Second one, uh, you know, uh, is, is um, sorry. Second one is an example uh, where uh, this is a company called Nebula. Nebula, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, came out of what we call the Google Launchpad Accelerator. It is helping and working with the, uh, in the agricultural area, it's helping farmers uh, using, again, image recognition. They take the images of the grains uh, and they do, a 3D, uh, uh, they do a 3D evaluation of the grains to give a certification to the farmer in terms of the quality of the grain. Now, you may think that, you know, what's the big deal around that? But in a farmer's life, this is one of the most important things because the person who has worked months and months and brings this grain into the mandi and there is a subjective analysis that happens by whoever is the agent in the mandi to decide what is the quality of the, of the grain and based on that is what the, or the pricing that they get. Or there are only very few, very limited places uh, which, are, which are run by the government to, uh, for them to take those few grains and, and get a certification. That's time consuming, it's a long wait, uh, process is long. This one actually does that literally in minutes. So this company has been working with the farmers, they actually give a, a certification of authentication in terms of the quality of the grain that you have, and with that you can actually demand what is the right kind of price that you should, as the farmer, you, uh, you should get uh, for the crop or the, for the grains that you've got into the mandi. Third one is, uh, you know, uh, this is around uh, diabetic retinopathy, right? Uh, this is one of the biggest causes of blindness. Again, uh, Google has been working with doctors in Chennai and in the US, and we've been actually building machine learning models based on the images uh, that we've been taken, taking of the retina uh, and helping uh, in the diagnosis and, the, and therefore, you know, moving into the, uh, into the cure element of it uh, to ensure that a timely medication or timely um, diagnosis can help you from or avoid uh, the blindness aspect, which is uh, which is which is critical. But as machines are learning, and this also actually gives efficiency to the doctors as well as scale, because we have fewer doctors, we have bigger issues in terms of you know the number of people who have got this ailment. So with the efficiencies that are coming in, with the fewer doctors that we have, you are able to now scale some of this to a lot more people. So your reach to in terms of number of people that you can cure uh, is actually multiplying as, as, as we go deeper into this. As in fact, with the machine learning as a, uh, you know, with the machine learning and, and what we are actually being able to produce out of the learnings of the, uh, of the diagnosis of uh, diabetic retinopathy, it is now being extended from uh, to have a better learning of um, identifying um, heart diseases uh, as well as giving early signals if there are for, for cardiac arrest, right? So it's kind of phenomenal, uh, and this is all happening in our lifetime, and this is, this is only going to scale as we see it over the next couple of years in terms of how you can actually add great value through machine learning and AI to the lives that we are living. Coming closer back home, uh, again, I hope uh, most of you in this room have Android phones, and if you, uh, and you're using the Google search uh, bar, in your own phones, uh, you know, when you flick up, uh, flip uh, through the various apps, if you press on the button G, you will actually see that there is a curated, um, um, you know, um, uh, there's a curated um, bunch of stories uh, which are based on your point of interest. So if you follow cricket and you follow a certain kind of 
uh, or certain kind of news or certain kind of um, hobbies that you have which you have been following. It actually curates the entire reading content for you. And the more you use it, the more it makes it sharper for you, right? I mean, I know for sure that, you know, when I, when I, after I've been using it, I used to actually spend like literally an hour going through one publication to the other because I had to wanted one article from somewhere, another article from somewhere. Now it actually, in the morning you get up and you start, it's pretty much all there that I really want, right? Which is, uh, again, I think saves at least uh, an hour of my life to spend with my family for sure. Okay, uh, after all this, I can't leave the stage without telling you what we do for the marketeers, right? This is where revenue gets made also and we have to let you know. So with all the science that we have, uh, we have, you know, um, just giving you one example of a product. This is this is this is called you know it's it's, a, it's it's work that we've been doing called rule by weather, right? Rule by weather really means that you know in India is a huge large uh, country. You have multiple uh, temperature zones across the country. At one point of time, there could be floods in some place, and some other pl another place in India could have you know um, a famine. Uh, one place is hot, the other place is cold. So it's really, you can't have, you know, um, one message that is being broadcast uh, across to the entire nation if you were to reach out to people. GSK and we work together to say that here, here is an issue where three out of ten people in this country have a nasal congestion uh, uh, issue, right? Uh, so 30% of you in this room should have a nas nasal congestion issue sitting even today, right? One out of ten actually takes medication for that, right? So the whole thing was how do we... How do we make sure that we get the right message at the right time for people to, uh, to use uh, the right medication that they truly should be using, right? So they tied up with an online pharma uh, store, and we used this kind of uh, targeted messaging based on different cities, what was happening in those cities in terms of temperature zones. And we had multiple other trigger points, trigger points in terms of, you know, on Google search, if you see um, uh, flu, uh, uh, search queries going up for flu and influenza, it basically means there is a high correlation that you have a nasal congestion. And if we see that these are coming in from Calcutta, means there is an issue that is an outbreak that is going to happen in Calcutta, right? So you would actually use those signals, fire some of these messages that come in, and the result that they saw was a 100% increase in the online offtake for their product. Pretty cool, right? I'm going to show you, and uh, this is my the last bit. I'm going to show you a video. Um, this is a video called "India Inspires India." Truly, uh, personally, I'm I'm truly inspired. I love watching this video again and again because it's just great to see how technology is truly transforming lives of people just beyond the metros into rural India, and how it's changing the Bharat as we as we know it. Can we have the video, please. Chali. आपको ले चलता हूं इस छोटे से शहर की सैर पे कितनी शांति कितना सुकून है यहां भाग दौड़ से बिल्कुल दूर राइट right? <laughs> जरा बताएंगे सबको आप जा कर रही इंटरनेट क्लास ये है इनकी इंटरनेट क्लास और ये है इस क्लास की टीचर परवीन बेगम मैं एक इंटरनेट साथी हूं मैं इन सबको इंटरनेट यूज करना सिखाती हूं अच्छा ये सब सीखने का फायदा कौन बताएगा अब रेशमा ओके गूगल लेमन क्लास पद्मावती इंटरनेट साथी ये है पद्मावती इनके गांव में किसी ने लेमन ग्रास के बारे में सुना तक नहीं था पर इंटरनेट की मदद से इन्होंने यहां लेमन ग्रास की फसल लहरा दी आज देखिए इनका लेमन ग्रास ऑयल एक से बढ़ के एक प्रोडक्ट्स में यूज होता है और पद्मावती जी आपकी इंस्पिरेशन हम्म <laughs> देखते ही देखते पद्मावती के जैसी कहानियों ने कई लोगों को इंस्पायर किया गजब की चीजें करने के लिए जैसे चन्ना पटना के रिया जन्ना ये मूर्तियां पूरी दुनिया में सिर्फ यही बनती है और इस सदियों पुरानी कला को सलामत रखने का इन्होंने एक नया तरीका सीखा इंटरनेट बस फिर क्या आज ये मूर्तियां दुनिया भर में छाई हुई है और ऑनलाइन फोर पॉइंट पाना भी खुद ही में एक कला है नहीं वैसे कलाकार तो यहाँ एक से बढ़कर एक है और देखना चाहेंगे yes, yes, yes. तो फिर चलिए ऋतिक ऋतिक आ, ऋतिक बाप रे 
ये ऋतिक बाबू भी आर्टिस्ट हैं नेशनल लेवल मार्शल आर्टिस्ट और ये अपने टाइक्वांडो की प्रैक्टिस करते हैं रेलवे स्टेशन पे जी हाँ रेलवे स्टेशन पे पूछिए कैसे पूछे पूछे ऐसे ऋतिक को नेशनल चैंपियन बन वर्ल्ड चैंपियन सॉरी वर्ल्ड चैंपियन इसलिए ये रोज यहाँ आके इंटरनेशनल खिलाड़ियों की ट्रेनिंग वीडियोज है और ऋतिक जैसे लोगों को देख के और भी लोग इंस्पायर होते हैं कुछ पढ़ने आते हैं कुछ पढ़ाने कुछ आते हैं मनोरंजन के और कुछ आते हैं दुनिया बदलने मीट गिरिजा एंड वैष्णवी ऐप डेवलपर्स जो अपने शहर के लिए एक सेफ्टी ऐप पे काम कर रहे हैं इनकी इंस्पिरेशन सेंटिल सेंटिल कुमार ऑन्टरप्रिनर टीचर पर सबसे पहले एक कोडर जिन्होंने गर्भवती महिलाओं के लिए एक हेल्थ ऐप बनाया है इन द विलेज इट इज इम्पॉसिबल फॉर प्रेगनेंट वुमेन टू गो टू द हॉस्पिटल विच इज ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर्स अवे आई यूज कोड टू मेक सर्टन डिवाइस एंड एप्स दैट ब्रिंग द हॉस्पिटल टू दिन दिस क्रूशियल टाइम दरअसल ये कहानी टेक्नोलॉजी की नहीं है ना ही इंटरनेट की ये कहानी है सेंटिल की ऋतिक की रियाज की पदमावती की और हर उस इंडियन की जो किसी नए तरीके किसी नई तरकीब से अपनी और दूसरों की जिंदगी बदल रहे हैं और जाने अनजाने में एक दूसरे को भी इंस्पायर कर रहे हैं हमें इंस्पायर कर रहे हैं थैंक यू एज यू सो यू नो द पाथ अड इज फुल ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज द पाथ अड इज कॉम्प्लेक्स चूज योर पार्टनर केयरफुली थैंक यू Thank you. Please stay with us on stage. I'm going to invite on stage Mr. Tejinder Gill, VP Global Sales and Head of India Ops, Drew Kola, to please present you with a memento, a token of our appreciation. Please take center stage, sir. Both of you. Sir, please take center stage. Good partner like you. Sir. <laughs>